Hello and welcome back to Math 112, Calculus 2. Today we have Lecture 32. Our topic in this lecture is Polar Coordinates. The Polar Coordinate System is a different coordinate system. It appears on the Cartesian plane and makes use of the values of x and y. You know how to find a point in the Cartesian plane given x and y. Well now, we're going to be able to find that same point using r and theta. r would just be the square root of x squared plus y squared. And you can see that the tangent of theta is y over x. So using x and y, we can find r and theta, new coordinates for a point. These new coordinates are called polar coordinates. Now in the same way that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and y over x is tangent of theta, we can also find x and y given r and theta. If we're given r and theta, r is the distance from the origin, theta is the angle of inclination of the vector, x is just r cosine theta, and y is just r sine theta. So we see that we can exchange an r theta coordinate for an xy and an xy for an r theta. Now, there are different ways that we could write values of r and theta that would give us a particular x and y. If I give you x and y, the point is unique. If I give you r and theta, the point is unique. But for a given xy, I can give you more than one r theta that will give you the same point. We'll talk about this more shortly. Let's take a look at some actual points. Suppose we're looking at the point x equal 1, y equals 1, and we wish to find it as r theta. Well, r squared is x squared plus y squared, so that's 2. And tangent theta is y over x, which equals 1. That means that r is the square root of 2, and theta is pi over 4. Now, suppose we have the point x equal 1, y equal square root of 3. r squared is x squared plus y squared, which is 4. Tangent of theta is y over x, which is the square root of 3. That means that r is 2, and theta is pi over 3. So our new point is 2 pi over 3 in r theta coordinates. Now here are some examples where we're given r and theta and we need to find x and y. Remember, x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So if r is equal to 5 and theta is equal to pi over 4, 45 degrees, then x is 5 times square root of 2 over 2, which is the cosine of theta. And y is 5 times square root of 2 over 2, which is r sine theta. So x and y are both 5 square root of 2 over 2. Now look at the second example. Here r is negative 3 and theta equals pi over 2. What does that mean? Well, theta equals pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Now if r were positive 3, then y would be positive 3. But since r is negative 3, y is negative 3. So when you have a negative r, you travel in the opposite direction of the ray, which is determined by the theta value. If you look at the ray that's given by a theta value passing through the origin, and if r is positive, you go in the positive direction of the ray, if r is negative, you go in the negative direction of the ray. And that is how we handle a negative value of r. 
Similarly, if theta is positive, of course we go counterclockwise. If theta is negative, then we go clockwise, and that's how we handle a negative theta. Now in this lecture, we're mostly concentrating on getting used to polar coordinates and polar coordinates being obtained and changed into x and y, Cartesian coordinates. But there are some basic equations that are very useful. We'll bring them up right now. Suppose we have r equals a constant for all theta. Our first example is graph r equals 5 for all theta. Well, r equals 5 is the equation of a circle centered at the origin. And for all theta, it just means that theta can take on any value. You will be on that circle of radius 5. So the graph of r equals a constant for all theta is a circle centered at the origin. Now suppose we have theta equals a constant for all r. Well, suppose we have theta equals pi over 6, for example. That's going to give us a ray. So pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, is the angle of inclination of the ray in the first quadrant. For positive values of r, the ray continues into the first quadrant for all values of r. For negative values of r, the ray continues into the third quadrant and that's for all negative values of r. This is how we graph equations in polar coordinates. We could actually change these equations into Cartesian coordinate equations, and we'll be doing that soon in our next lecture.